Good morning, awesomes. How are we? Good day, Bruce. Good day, Sheila. If Gary and, and Gloria are watching in Australia, take your wallaby for a walk and all that. So um, we've got people tuning in from all over now. So we're getting three or four hundred people uh, online. So hey, praise God for lockdown. Amen. You always find a way out of it. My uh, house arrest haircut's coming on nicely, as you can see. And uh, there'll be a rush on April the 12th. We're just working it out and booking in it already. So, yeah, I want to talk about something which I'm one of these people. I'm a bit like um, I'm, a, I'm a visual sort of person. And I, 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 I quite often get asked the same question. How do you, how, what, what motivates you to, to, on a particular subject? And I find creation is what speaks to me most. I'm driving around, I might be fishing, I might be on my bike, um, walking, you know, and I look at things and I think, wow, you know. And so I was passing, for those who are watching online, we, we live in a place called Lincolnshire, and uh, it's on the east coast of England, and we've got a lot of flat land around in Lincolnshire and so we go down to East Anglia and it gets really flat there and and I also do a bit of fishing in Holland so for our Holland people today that are here and, and, and from that region uh, I go around a place called Hell of a Sluice I don't know if that's pronounced right but it's just outside Rotterdam and boy they have flat land in Holland in fact I've never went the first time I went there was more bikes on the road than there was cars the kids bike everywhere adults bike they have they have parking spots for bikes every so many miles and these shacks are full of bikes and then they catch a bus from there into school or whatever and so so it really intrigued me and so I, I was traveling the other day out out sort of on the marshes way out towards Mablethorpe Skegness way Tetney way summer coats for those who know the area and because, because our land's flat, we, our roads are, are raised up and then we have drainage either side. And if you go to Holland, there's drains everywhere. I mean, everywhere. And so I was driving along and the Lord just spoke to me and he said, speak on the highway of grace. Speak on the highway of grace. And I said, well, we always speak on grace and we always... And he said, no, speak on the grace highway. You see... These roads, <clears throat> they've got a ditch either side. And the Lord was just showing me that we just need to stay on this highway of grace. Okay? Because if we, if we get distracted, then we're liable to fall into a ditch. Anybody fell into a ditch lately? <laughs> Amen? People are running and walking and whatever. We, we took a left turn at um, Horseshoe Point the other day, or sorry, before we got to Horseshoe Point. And I, being the mastermind navigator that I am, uh, worked out that we was heading back towards the sort of fitties area of, of Cleethorpes, for those who know it. Uh, but we got lost. And we ended up stranded, basically, with the tide coming in. And so Wendy's there, tra-la-la, tra-la-la, you know, and I'm there, this is not that good, really. So anyway, we didn't panic, we, we followed our traces back. And when I looked on Google Earth, Techni Lock, the river, goes actually into the, into the Humber, where we was trying to cross. But I, I didn't remember it that way, I thought it went the other side. So anyway, we got stranded. So I want to talk about looking out for ditches, and I, there's lots of ditches out there that we could look at, but I just want to look at two ditches in particular. Um, you see, because we have a choice. How many of you know, as believers today, we have a choice. We can choose the world's way, or we can choose the highway, God's way, the grace way, okay? And over the years, we've had plenty of opportunities, as I'm sure lots of people have here, to join in with the world's way. However, I will tell you this, that it doesn't work. Um, it leads to bitterness, it leads to unforgiveness. You know, I was thinking the other day, unforgiveness is no different to cancer. It just eats you alive. And that's the world's way. The world's way says, get even. Amen? The world's way says, don't ever do, you know, have nothing to do with these people, da da da. 
Well, I want to t tell you that we should be choosing the highway of grace. And I'm going to show you some things, some, some things to watch out for. And we've had, you know what, we've had some stuff happen to us that, guess what? But we're still here. We're still trucking for Jesus. And those things are history. You know, we was on holiday once and we ran a church and they, we had a building. And we was actually flying back to Luton. And I, when I landed, my phone pinged and they said, the trustees have had a meeting and we've changed all the locks and we're kicking you out. And I'm like, well, praise God. Guess what? It's time to throw a party. Amen. You know what? Paul, Paul said, throw yourself a party when you get into difficulties. See, we could have chose a different way. We could have chose the world's way. But we just decided to trust Jesus. And our persecution, as always, for those who know us and those who are online who don't know us, and for new people that are here today, you know what? We have put a priority on the word of God. And that's why we've had opposition. That's why people have come against us. Because we chose to put a priority above all on God's word. Amen? Amen. And it's the only way to be. Because otherwise you become lukewarm and you fall into ditches. And so we've decided to take not the world's way but the high uh, way. Which is the grace highway. So a lot of people don't understand grace and how it actually works. But that, there's lots of definitions about grace. You know, God's unmerited, undeserved, un, unreserved favour. Um, but I will give you it simply. So that I, I like simple. Anybody like simple? If you want to walk your life and run your life on God's highway of grace, you will find grace in the person of Jesus. That's, who, that's what grace is. It's, it's the person of Jesus. And if you will just allow Jesus to walk through you and before you, you won't fall into these ditches that I'm going to talk about. But it's very easy to say, but not so easy to always do, is it? It's a lot easier to say it than to put it into action. So if you want a definition, Jesus is grace. Okay? Jesus was, you see, God's grace was his response to mankind, if you want to put it that way. And faith was our response to God's grace, found in the person of Jesus. So when it comes down to the highway of grace, it's found in a person, and it makes it quite easy. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, we can take the higher way of grace, because Christ has been before us. And so I'm going to look at some things... <clears throat> In Holland, they call them dikes, and there's another way, word for them. Marco will know. Um, they had them in Louisiana when they had the floods. They were, they were like barriers. Anyway, but we call them ditches, don't we? We call them ditches in the UK. So I'm going to look at some things um, that to be aware of, to, to stay on, on God's highway of grace. See, on one side of there, and we've been guilty of this, right? So you're on the highway of grace, but then we go and we fall into the ditch of all faith and all word. You know what? That's a ditch. Now, I'm going to have to clarify that. You see, because Ephesians 2 verse 8 tells us, for it's by grace that you say, through faith, and this not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. So surely faith and the word, they're not a ditch, are they? Well, they are if you have them out of balance. You see, we came through, when we got saved, we came through the famous... Uh, word of faith movement you know with lots of faith preachers out there word preachers and listen we believe in voice activated faith okay I'll put that for the record but when it becomes all about you and what you're confessing and what you're saying out of your mouth see when we grew up in, in the word of faith movement we weren't allowed to say anything negative anybody can remember that you know, if you said, oh, my head's hurting a bit. Whoa, brother, don't confess that. What are you confessing that for? Oh, my feet are killing. Whoa, don't be saying that. Goodness me. And it becomes a work. It becomes your faith that's moving mountains. And so if you have all, work, all faith over there, and it's all about what you're saying, listen, it's, faith's about God's faith, Right? in you, your response to God. So faith is activated 
because it's God's faith in you, not your faith. Your, your faith is limited. Your faith is that you sat on a chair and believing it's not going to collapse today. Your faith is that you get on a plane and you believe that the pilot's not drunk. Amen? Or on drugs. Or your faith is a natural faith that you get on a plane and think the guy knows where he's going. Right? That's natural faith. But supernatural faith, you know what, is found and, and, and is activated because it's God's faith in us. So, so that's a ditch in a way, all faith. So, so what about, well faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Because the other part of that ditch is that it's all word. Well it's just speak, just get the word into there brother. Well faith comes by hearing and hearing the word, doesn't it? But it also says in Ephesians 2, Verse 8, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it, be, it can become a bit of a works again. So, so what about word then? And what about faith? Well, Hebrews 4 verse 2 says this. It says, but the word which they heard did not profit them because it wasn't mixed with faith. See? So you could be all word over there in this ditch. But it didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. Do you see what I'm saying? So all faith's not good, all words not good. You've got to get them together and walk on the highway of grace. Otherwise you end up in a ditch. Anybody want to be in a ditch? No. Smelly things. So the other side then of this highway of grace is a little bit of controversy alert. But it's the ditch of law and works. Boy, is that a ditch. You know what, we, that's why a lot of people don't understand Wendy and myself. Because we're all about being examples of the person of Jesus to a lost and dying world. Not always perfect, by the way. However, people don't understand that they think that we should be doing this and we should be doing that. Listen, I, I've got some news for you today. I was in the car this morning. And I said to the Lord, when did the law actually end? Okay, the Mosaic law with some Levitical law in there from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It's a good question. When did the law end? Well, I'll tell you when it ended. It ended when Jesus said, it is finished. Amen? That wasn't just a finished work for salvation. That wasn't just a finished work for the re redemptive plan for mankind. That was a finished work of the law. That was when the law ended officially ceased and, and was dead. See, we're only under two laws now. To love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might and to love your neighbour as yourself, okay? The law was never designed for a righteous man. But we weren't righteous up until Jesus. But, you know, before the law came, sin wasn't imputed, placed into mankind's account. We know that because Moses was a murderer, right? In Exodus, kills an Egyptian. What happens? Nothing. Then the law came and, and the consciousness of sin revived. Law was then imputed into mankind's account. And guess what now? If you pick up stones on the Sabbath, stone them. Stone them to death. Kill them. Picking sticks up on the Sabbath. Why? Because it was now law. It was now legal. But when Jesus hung on that cross and said, it is finished, the law no longer has hold over us. Now, we can see the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And, you know, we use Galatians 3.13 that Christ has redeemed us from the curse. And a lot of people leave it there. No, it doesn't say that. It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. See, as believers today, if we start to go back under law, start back going under, under you'll end up in a ditch. Amen? Because you'll no longer be on the highway of grace. So the law of the spirit of life in Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death. The law is a ditch on the other side. And you know what? The law was given, and a lot of people don't understand this, but you can find this in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 56. Going back into law and works is self-righteousness. It's saying that it is finished was not enough. Now then, faith does have a corresponding action, all right? You know, Christ in us is the hope of glory. So if we're in a situation and we can speak into that world, encouragement and stuff, 
that's, that's okay. But going back into the law and work, self-righteous, actually strengthens sin. Do you know that? So 1 Corinthians 15 verse 56 says this. It makes us more and more sin conscious. And the strength of sin is the law, is what 1 Corinthians 15 56 says. But 57, anybody remember what that says? It says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. So, going back into that law and doing... Listen, God made us to be human beings, not human doings. The church will send you bonkers. Religion will send you bonkers with works, if you plug into it. When I got saved, I got saved under the Methodist church. And praise God for the Methodist church. Praise God for the songs that we sang today. Back to some old songs that we used to sing there. But you know what? They just let you do this and do that and do this. I volunteered for about seven jobs in about the first six months I, I didn't even know the order of any of the books of the Bible I got saved and they made me overseas missions director of this little Methodist church I'm like really biggest promotion I've ever had in my life amen but we've only been saved five minutes so religion loves and absolutely loves works it loves law you know and we're under law of the land, we're under law of governments, we're under law of the constitution and stuff like that. So there are many other ditches that we could look at. But I want us to just focus on staying on the highway of grace. Staying on the grace highway, which is found in the person of Jesus. So I'm just going to give you some summaries there that, that, that might just help you just to write these down if you want to. But the first thing is this, that remember grace is a person. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Grace is a person and his name is Jesus. If you want to, if you want to carry on uh, being you know, successful and blessed and favoured, always remember that it's never about you. It was always about Jesus. All right? It's always about Jesus. So grace is a person. All faith and all word is a ditch. Amen. You've got to get some balance on those things. Keep on the highway and the higher way of grace. Law and works, it's a ditch. How many churches do you know and, and have been involved with where it's all about, you know, your performance? You know, um, there's lots of things that churches put in place. You know, I'm thinking of things like tithing. You know, I heard somebody a while back saying, oh, well, you know, People have got to, still got to tithe in all these times and, you know, this, that, and the other. I'm just going to throw this out there. You know, we, we believe in tithes and offerings. We, that's how we've done it over the years. We have no funding. We've never applied for funding. No, no, no governments have funded us. Everything's been voluntary from uh, 1997 when we started. Um, but, you know, tithing's Old Testament. God loves a cheerful giver. What if you want to give more? A tithe was a measure of a tenth. What if you want to give 50% this year? We've got a friend of ours in America who's retired now, and he's living off 20% of his pension. And 80% he gives away. Well, if you're back under law that it's a tithe of 10%, then, then, then you know, but it was finished with Jesus. So these are other rules and laws. You know, um, churches are mad on numbers, aren't they? They're mad on attendances and stuff like that and I'm, I'm for growth I'm, the more people we get the more we can cheer on amen the more we can encourage people but we've just got to be careful that we keep things at the place that they're supposed to be and that's the finished work of Jesus because it will become a, it will be tell me I'm telling you by experience it will become a ditch and we'll fall into it and quite often some of these ditches are, are not as steep and not as obvious as we think they are. They're very subtle sometimes. Like the law, the, the, the ditch of works and the law is quite a big ditch. It's quite easy to see when churches are becoming works mentality. But some of the other ditches are quite small. Ditches are like maybe unbelief there. Amen? You know, just a narrow one that will get you off track. So keep on the highway and the highway. And the only way to overcome things when people come against you when, you, when you're in difficulties, disappointments, discouragements, anything with a dis on the beginning of it, is to remind yourself that, that the highway of grace is found in the person of Jesus. 
The highway of grace will keep you out of the ditch of all faith, all word, the ditch of the law and sin and death, the law of, you know, unforgiveness. And just remember, grace is God's response to sin and death. Grace was God's response to sin and death. Amen? So I'm going to end it there, and uh, hopefully you've been encouraged. And, but what I'm going to do is that, you know what, I felt this morning that this is going out live now on Facebook, and it will go on YouTube. And so I just felt to speak into, into, into the, 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 the filming of this today and into this building as well. Because we've had, we've had these cards printed and we've already read them out and we've had a couple of responses that people have, have, have said yes to Jesus. All right? And we've got to keep the main thing the main thing. It's all right us all being on the highway of grace, but what about everybody that's in the ditches? Amen. You know, we've got to be good Samaritans. We've got to be the people that God causes us to do. And so we want to increase, we want to increase the kingdom of heaven, don't we? And depopulate any other kingdom. And so... For those watching online, I'm just going to read this out. And if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, if you want to today know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, just follow me and then let us know. Give us, send us an email. I think it's still info at onechurchgrimsby.co.uk or send us a message on Facebook and then we can get in touch with you if you'd allow us to. So, uh, so dear friend, God bless you so much. Oh, yeah, so much that he sent the greatest gift, Jesus, to the earth to give you an abundant, overcoming and eternal life. If you are ready, pray this prayer right now. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse my heart and make me a new person in you right now. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for me. Jesus, I want to thank you for loving me enough to die for me. I accept all that your shed blood through the, the, uh, brought for me, bought for me on the cross. And I receive you as my Lord and Saviour, and in your name I pray, Amen. So if you've done that, our website will be www.onechurchgreensby.co.uk. Contact us, we'd love to sit, uh, hear from you. Hopefully you've encouraged there when you're travelling on your car on the way home. Keep, out, keep your eye out for the ditches. And uh, it just helps me to remember, I've been loads of times this week in the car, out, out and about, and it's really helped me to stay on this highway, this higher way. And uh, so I'm going to end that with, there and all saints said Amen.